Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at transitions and how to make your track a bit more exciting because most of the excitement actually comes from transitions. That's what really like makes your track exciting if you think about it. It's those big, it's those in, those transitions at every 8 bars and 16 bars. So we're going to dive into that and see how we can spice up your loops. Okay. <laughs> So we're just going to loop the end of the 8 bars. So what we do here is that we are going to export the whole track. So we're going to bounce a copy of every, all the elements playing. Okay, now we have our audio. So you'll just delete everything and leave that piece of audio. Just make sure all your tails and no delays or anything. So what I like to use is this loop flash. This has a bunch of different effects. For stuttering or reverses or rewinds, etc. You can do it manually by chopping up your loop, but I just like this, it's just, it's more interesting for me, more random, and it's fun to press them. So I'll just record different effects, and then use the automation for the effects on the loop itself. You get a bunch of different starter programs, I'm just using the built-in Cubase loop, loop mesh. So every notch is a different effect. Just a kick in front and then a reverse kick for some more impact. Now silence is very important. Way more exciting. Yeah, a bunch of different starter programs. Like Google starter VSTs. I know Isotope has a nice one as well. Just checking that the volumes are the same. So there's no jump in volume between the the fall that we just created and our track. So you want to duplicate the kicks. I'm doing it every 8th note. You can do it for a couple of bars. I normally do it for quite a bit, but we'll do a short one. And then what you do is, you um, you pitch envelope. And you take the time correction off. And what it does, it makes the clip shorter and it pitches it up. So we do that a couple of times until we have a bar worth of pitches. You can do it as much times as you want. So we'll just get it into a bar. Time stretch it. So I think we should take the section and add the bass. And then maybe use the filter. Yeah, we should I think we should use the filter to mess with it a bit. Get creative. There's there's no right and wrong. There's no right and wrong, just get creative. Do what you like. 
but make sure to make it interesting because this is what really is possible <laughs> So put it on the filter channel. So checking our volumes. You don't want your transitions to be loud when you have to drop. So that's a high pass on the top and a low pass. I'm leaving the percussion there just to keep the energy going forward instead of having the energy of the percussion stop. So now that we created that exciting thing, full, we can bounce it into our track again and then maybe throw the loop mesh on it and see if we can make it even more spicy. So we filtered that first kick and bass. We have kicks going up. We have filtered kick and bass channel. We have a stutter. So there's about three different techniques you can use. Okay, let's use our vocal to make a transition. Turn Ari Krishna into a bad boy. Simple but effective does the job. Let's maybe mess with the kicks a bit. This could turn Ari Krishna into a bad boy. So let's do your normal 16 32 bit kick. Turn Ari Krishna into a bad boy. This could turn Ari Krishna into a bad boy. Just fading to make this it more interesting in and out. Turn Ari Krishna into a bad boy. Always volume control. This turn Ari Krishna into a bad boy. Let's maybe throw the fault on it. 
So I'm using the plastic filter. It's free. And the bomb shanker. And then I have a limiter just to control the volume of the transitions. A bad boy. I really like the plastic filter. A bad boy. It sounds really cool and it's A free. Bad boy. A bad boy. A bad boy. A bad boy. Yeah, the high pass sounds nice. A simple vocal and a high pass and a pattern that kicks. 